Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel, A Magical Life with Ayla Hello. I'm Ayla, and today we're going to be talking about what I call reverse magical vibration. So let's get started. So reverse magical vibration sounds like something's going backwards. And in all actuality, there is no such thing as a reverse magical vibration. Everything is moving forward all the time. And what I mean by that is, so, you know, we think a lot about what we don't want. We don't want to be sick. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to be lonely. These are the three things that motivates our life. Wealth, love, and wellness or healing. So we don't want the opposite of those things. We don't want to be sick all the time. We don't want to be lonely. We don't want to be in poverty. But the truth of the matter is, the more you think about those things, the more you create those things because we are creating forward all the time. So if you get up every morning and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I have a new bump or a new bruise or I have a new uh, ailment, I have a new illness, um, you may be thinking to yourself, I don't want these things, but yet here they are. The same way with love. It's like we do, we want a relationship. So we think about the lack of a relationship. We think about how lonely we are. We think about, uh, so many times in the last video, we talked about turning loose. And many times we hold on to that past relationship that doesn't exist anymore. Um, with our wealth, a lot of times what we focus on is the lack of wealth. We focus on bills that are not paid. We focus on not having enough money to do the things that we want to do or to do for our children or our family the way we want to. And that becomes our focus. The lack of those things becomes our focus. Now, I think of, in my mind, I think of focusing on the lack as throwing everything into reverse but it's not. Um, that's just my little mental way of assigning it a place. Everything in the universe moves forward. Everything in the universe is a positive motion. Even if you are negative, if you're having a negative thought, if you're focusing on poverty, if you're focusing on your loneliness, if you are focusing on your illness, that is still a positive forward thought. And I know it sounds contradictory. I know that it does. But the saying, the very, the very simple saying that helps us really get a grip on this is whatever you focus on is what you create. So with that in mind, think about it. If you are focusing on what you don't have, you don't have a loving, healthy relationship. You don't have a healthy body and a healthy mind. You don't have money for the things that you want or need or the things that your family wants or needs. You're in a place of lack. Now, I've said it before that it's really difficult, almost impossible, to focus from a place of lack, to create from a place of lack. Because being in a place of lack is extremely distracting. And if we have 
that vibration going on in our life, if we have the vibration of illness or poverty or loneliness going on in our life, and we we've already got that vibration there, and then we begin to focus on it, we create more of that vibration. So, you know, I hear a lot of people, particularly when it comes to illnesses, um, uh, I met a lady in a restaurant one day. Um, I was in there with another friend, and she came over to say, this other lady came over to say hello, and she talked for 15 minutes about everything that was wrong with her, all of her illnesses, all of her little ailments, all her little bumps and bruises and scratches. And when she walked away, me and my friend, who is magical as well, were amazed. We were amazed. We didn't interact with the conversation. We just sat. It wasn't a conversation. It was her talking and telling us everything that was wrong with her. And we just sat and listened to it. Um, that is the express way to create more of that illness, to create more of that vibration that's going to bring that illness to you. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, one of my friends who I do not know personally on Facebook came on one day and said, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to even go into it, but I need I need your healing energy. And I thought, that's beautiful. And I wrote her back and I said, good for you for not putting that out there, for not putting more of that vibration out there that you're going through. Now, let me be really clear about something. I'm not asking you to ignore what is happening to you, okay? What I'm asking you to do is... Stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Don't put that energy out there. Um, I've heard people say, oh my gosh, I'll bet I have this illness or I'll bet I have that. Oh, no, 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 stop. Don't do that. Go to your doctor, find out. The best way to change up your vibration is to stop talking about it. And to an extent, stop thinking about it. Remember I said that magic happens because of what we think, say, and do. So basically, with think, say, and do, you want to get all three of these in the same vibrational resonance. Get them all on the same page, as they say. So you want your thoughts to be in alignment with your words and you want your thoughts and your words to be in alignment with how you act on the outside, your deeds. So if you're dealing with illness, um, you can't ignore it. I know you can't ignore it. But what you can do is not focus on it. Focus is concentrated, deliberate, willful thought. Concentrated, deliberate, willful thought. So if you're, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, this is what's going on with you. Um, and then that's all you think about. That's all you think about. Then you're in trouble vibrationally. Okay. Um, because the more you think about it, the more that thing's going to manifest because that's how magic works. So take a notebook, ask your doctor, what is it? How is it affecting me? And what is the cure for this? What, what are you going to do to guide me through this so that I can heal myself? And then you can work your magic to the opposite of that illness. Now, how do we work our magic to the opposite of that illness? What we do, first of all, is we want to think in the opposite direction. Think in the opposite direction. So if this is an illness that's going to put you in bed for a while, um, that's kind of a good thing for the moment. Not forever, but for the moment. Because it allows you time to use your mind to visualize 
all of those activities that you like to do in your life when you are not confined to the bed because of some silly illness. The next thing you want to do is you want to talk in terms of getting well. Don't tell people, oh, this is the illness I have. This is the illness I have. This is, I went to a meeting. I went to a business meeting one day and the, the greeter at the door was part of the union for the, the meeting I was there to participate in. And every time somebody came through the door, she would talk to them about her illness as if everybody knew that she was ill. And I had never met this lady before, so I didn't know what her relationship was to everybody else. But she just kept telling the same story to every new person who came through the door. Oh, you know, this was happening to me and, and I'm much better now, but here's what was ailing me. And she would go into detail about what was ailing her. Um, this, this is not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to have conversations, primarily with other magical people, but it doesn't have to be a magical person if that person understands what you are doing that you are involved in a magical process which requires positive thoughts, positive words, and positive action. Have a conversation with somebody um, about how good you do feel. Okay, this, this illness is happening. This other thing is happening. But there's other things that are happening with your body, that are right on track, that are healthy and well and exactly the way they should be. That's where you want your focus to be. You want your focus to be on what is good, what is well, what is right with you. Okay, so and then the last thing is like the deeds. It's like our actions. If you can... Um, Get out of bed for a few minutes every day and walk around and look out the window or go outside. Um, now this is this is talking about healing and health, but what what do we what do we do if we're talking about love? What are we doing if we're talking about a relationship? Um, I have been around people who really really felt a very strong lack in the relationship area of their life. And so this was their focus. This was what they talked about. Um, and it was mournful lots of times. It was very sad. And I have sat and listened. I've just sat and listened, um, knowing that this person was creating more of what they were talking about. Um, a really good practice for love is um, to... Think about what you want in a partner and then think about yourself. Are you those things? Could you be those things for a partner? Are you asking someone to be something that you're not? This is something that we need to work on and that's the thought process. Um, the, the words part of this is to not speak in terms of lack. Speak in terms of what you do have, even though you're going to be talking about family love, you're going to be talking about the love that comes with friendship. This is still the vibration of love. And that vibration of love is going to bring more love into your life, primarily in the form of a partner. So you can look around in your life. You can have conversations with people. Um, I love that meme that says, um, tell your friends you love them. Make it weird. It's like, yeah, you know, Talk about the love that you have in your life. I have a small group of friends. I have a small family. And we're very kind of tight-knit. I mean, I love these people. And there's no lack of love in my life. So if I was trying to create a romantic love, I would have all of that energy of the appreciation of the friends and the family that I have. Um, so with your money, the same thing with your money. Um, what are the thoughts? What thoughts do you have around money that come from a place of lack that are kind of in a backwards vibration? 
been so poor. My, you know, my whole family for generations have been in poverty. Um, my grandmother used to say, we are poor as church mice. As if that had some, um, some valor to it or um, it was a good thing. Um, those are not things to be talking about. Um, in my life right now, uh, things are kind of crowded. And I'm finding that I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because my family is here with me. So our our living space is crowded. Um, I have worked it out in a way that um, I have a separate space from the rest of the family to live. Um, it's a very tight space. Um, and every day I wake up in my very comfortable little bed and I think, how happy I am to be warm and to have shelter and to have nice food to eat and to have my family here with me. Um, those are my thoughts. And then my words, I don't think anybody's ever heard me say, gee, I wish this hadn't happened. I wish my family hadn't come to live with me. Nobody's ever heard me say that because I've never said that. Um, there in in my in my vernacular, there is no negative or backward vibration about living in a tiny little space because my family came to live here with me. Um, I love this. Uh, I'm thankful for the space that I have. I'm thankful that my family is here with me. Um, and so my actions are, I clean my tiny little space, I take care of my tiny little space, I live in my tiny little space as though it were a mansion. In my mind, it kind of is a mansion. I'm not homeless, I'm not cold, I'm not hungry. And this tiny little space provides me with the positive vibration of this situation. So, you know, we want to be really careful. Lots of times I hear people say, oh, you know, I'm such a positive person. And they're really not, you know. Um, if you're constantly focusing on your illnesses, if you're constantly focusing on your loneliness, if you're constantly focusing on your poverty, and you're thinking, I don't want this, but I don't want this, it doesn't matter. The, the vibration of the universe, the vibration of the community of cells that makes up you only sees the focus. It doesn't see that that's not what you want to create. It sees that that's what you are creating. Um, this was the hardest concept for me to get my mind around. It's like, how can the universe misunderstand my vibration? When I am clearly saying, I don't want this. But the universe doesn't see the don't want this. The universe sees what this is. This lack, this poverty, this loneliness, this illness. That's what you're focusing on. When you focus on any of these things, you emit a certain vibration. When you when you focus on not wanting to be ill, you create the vibration of illness. You see what I'm saying? When you focus on not wanting to be lonely, that's all your vibration. That's the only vibration you're generating is this, this vibration of loneliness. If you're focusing on your illnesses and you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't like this. I don't want to create this. It's just happening to me. It may have just happened to you in the beginning. I don't know because I don't know your thought process. But one thing I can guarantee you is that you will stay in that place of the vibration of illness as long as that is what your focus is. We create what we focus on, whether we want it or we don't want it. So the only way, and this is so counterintuitive, the only way to create to the opposite of what you don't want is to 
immerse yourself in the vibration of what is good, what is working well in your life. Immerse yourself in the vibration of what it is you do want. If you are confined to a wheelchair and you don't like that, you want to get up and walk around, then start emitting that vibration through visualizing about it, through talking about how grand it is to walk, and then to exercise your legs in such a way that it may help you get out of that chair and walk someday. But this is your focus. Walking then becomes your focus. You go back to your doctor. You say, I want to walk. The doctor's like, well, you're not going to walk. You're not going to walk for the rest of your life. Um, for those of you who um, have looked at some of my earlier videos, one of the movies that I always, uh, it's required viewing for magic school, is um, Rhonda Burns' The Secret. There's a story in The Secret about a man who was injured very badly in a plane crash. Um, a little, I think it was a Cessna, and he was by himself, and uh, the plane crashed, and he didn't die, but he wounded and really caused problems for uh, some of the lower nerves, which affect the legs. And the doctors told him, you will not walk again. Uh, I don't know what time of year this was, but he set a goal for himself that by Christmas, he was going to be walking. And every day, every day, he would visualize seeing himself walking, looking down at his feet and seeing one foot moving in front of the other foot. Uh, he only allowed positive conversations in his room. And he exercised his legs. And these three things, this thought, words, and actions, this strong, powerful visualization and those strong, powerful words, and then the actions to back all of that up, he walked. He walked out of the hospital by Christmas. So that story made me very happy. Um, there was another story about a lady who had, who had cancer. And she said when they first told her that she had cancer, she knew that it was of utmost importance that all of her thoughts be positive. So her and her husband watched a lot of comedy on TV. They had happy conversations. She uh, never allowed herself to go into the thought stream of um, what if. You know, what if I can't get a grip on this illness? What if it what if it just overtakes me? What if I can't do anything about it? She never allowed herself to go into that stream. And she was cured of cancer. So the reason why I wanted to do this video on this backwards vibration, what feels like a backwards vibration, is because I see a lot of people doing it. And when I see them doing it, um, I think, oh my gosh, I, I want to say something. I want to, and sometimes it's just not appropriate for me to say something. You know, it's like they are where they are. They have free will. They can be wherever they want. But if you watch this video, and you understand what I'm saying, start thinking in terms of um, a forward vibration. Start thinking in terms of, uh, and you can pivot with, with this as well. Catch yourself. Catch yourself. When you're like, you know, I think I have this disease or I think I have that disease, catch yourself and interrupt that thought. Interrupt that thought process and replace it with something else. But I feel so good today. I have so much energy today. I mean, yeah, this, this other thing is malfunctioning. But I feel really good. I feel really healthy. I have a lot of energy. I'm not in pain today. Um, those are all good things. You know, I am, um, I am working towards my health and my healing. Um, affirmations are good. I, I've heard 
some naysaying about affirmations in that it takes thousands of affirmations to change your reality. I'm not really sure I believe that because what an affirmation does is it works with your belief system. It works with the internal vibration of what you are emitting. So if you are constantly telling yourself, I am healthy, I am well, I am healing, even if you're not well, you're healing. Um, I had an issue a couple of years ago with my eyes. I've all, you know, I, I did the pivoting thing and got into the positive place and started listening to the words that were coming out of my mouth years ago and started practicing a forward vibration, started really catching myself until I could, I was able to eliminate, I would say, 98% of the negative thoughts and the negative words and the negative actions. So I've been practicing this for many years. And in October of 2019, I woke up blind. And I went to the, I went to one doctor who said, oh, you got to go see this specialist. And that specialist was like, yeah, yeah, I can help you. But you also need this specialist. So all the specialists got together and they basically fixed my eyes. Um, a year later, I, I, one of the things they can't fix is if you are farsighted, my, my cataract doctor told me this, if you are farsighted after you have your cataracts removed, you're probably still going to be farsighted. They have a hard time fixing that. Um, and I'm farsighted, so I need glasses still. And so a year after all of those surgeries, I had five surgeries, um, I needed to go to the optometrist to have an eye test to get new glasses. And uh, he looked into my eyes and he was like, holy cow, what did they do to you? So I told him about the five surgeries and he said, you know, it doesn't always work out this well for everybody. As a matter of fact, you are in a minority of people that these operations work out really well for. And I just smiled and I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself, well, I'm kind of different, you know. Um, when I first lost my eyesight, um, I didn't panic. There was no negativity around that. I wondered to myself, I wonder if my life is fixing to change in a big way. People can live without their eyesight. It just meant that I would learn a new set of skills. Um, but then I went to these doctors who didn't even hesitate. They knew exactly what to do. They knew exactly what was going on with my eyes. They knew how to fix it. And I got my eyesight back. And at that moment, I thought, yay. You know, there wasn't a lot of, I wasn't scared. And I know, I know, I'm not telling you not to be afraid um, because stuff happens. That's really, really scary. Um, and, but, but like I said, I've been practicing this forward vibration with my magic for years, years and years and years. Um, and I'm pretty much of the mindset that um, I, I have powerful magic. I can change what I can change. And if it's that I wrote it down, in my pre-life life plan that I need to experience or want to experience something like this, then I will gladly go into that experience. But as it turned out, I had the experience of losing my eyesight and getting my eyesight back. And every step of the way, I was able, I think because I've been on this path for so long, to see the goodness in what was happening to me. Um, you, you've heard it said um, that saying, um, what, could what else could possibly go wrong? That's a backwards vibration. So what you want to be thinking is, what else, what other wonderful, amazing thing could happen to me? And start thinking in that direction. What else could go right 
what else? This is, this is so fabulous. You know, life right now is so wonderful and amazing. And I love everything that's going on in my life. What other wonderful, amazing blessing is waiting for me out there? So I hope that, I hope this makes sense. Um, I will never ever say, feel this way, even though you feel this way. That's not how feelings work. Um, there was many times in my depression and my mental illness that I couldn't understand why I felt that way. I couldn't understand why I was depressed, why I was having mental illness when my life was amazing and perfect just the way it was. Um, and, and I was fine, but I was depressed. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't just set that suitcase down and walk away. But it doesn't work that way. So this is a process. This is something that, there again, takes time. Um, I'm happy to be at this place. It took many years to get me to this place. Um, but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that now I'm finally here, that uh, I can look at the things that happened to me and find the positive in that. In some things. In some things, there are no positive. But in most things to do with what can happen to us in life, we can find an upside, even if it's a tiny little upside, that will help keep us out of that negative motion of our magic. Okay, so that's all I have to say today. Um, as always, comments below. I would love to hear from you. Um, and we'll see you soon. Blessed be.